Video conferences are a great way for team members to meet and collaborate on projects without having to be in the same room, state, or even nation for that matter. Every single Canvas course has a built-in video conferencing tool called Canvas Conferences. These are powered by a program called Big Blue Button, which is really quite user-friendly. These conferences have many advantages. First, they can be started by anyone in the class, teacher or student. This way, students can set meetings up on their own anytime their teams need to meet. Second, within a meeting, any participant can open and upload a document on his or her own computer so that others can simultaneously see review in real time. Further, yeah. participants can do what's called a screen yeah. share to display any web page so their entire one. team can collaboratively do online research. Third, meetings can be recorded so that instructors can review them afterwards to offer specific feedback to each team. Having recordings of each meeting also serves as a great archive. An absent team member can still see what was missed by simply viewing the recording. And if team members need to go back and reference things that they decided in previous meetings, well, they can always do so. The best part is that they're really easy, provided everyone has a computer with a working webcam and a strong internet connection. Canvas conferences are designed to work with computers, not smartphones or iPads. I mean, these will work on these other devices, but without all the same functions and tools like screen sharing, which we'll examine in just a few minutes. So let's take a look at how to use Canvas conference in just three steps. First, how to start a Canvas conference. Second, we'll look at how to conduct a conference. And third, let's look at how to end and save a conference. As I demonstrate things here, keep in mind that what you see on your computer might look slightly different than what I show you because simply we're using different computers or different web browsers. So there might be slight differences, but the Canvas conference program should look just about the same. And if there's something that doesn't quite make sense on your end, just call the 24-7 Canvas helpline listed in any Canvas course. Uh, you can talk with a real person who can remotely see your screen and walk you through about any issue. Well, let's begin. Step one, starting a conference is really easy and the process is identical for students and instructors alike. Once inside a course, just click over here on the button that says Conferences. Then click on the purple button that says Add Conference. Each meeting has a default generic name using the name of the course, but be sure to change and personalize this. Ideally, label it with names of the participants. Otherwise, it becomes really difficult to locate your completed meeting later on if all the meetings listed have about the same default name of the course. Then be sure to put a check in the little box that says Enable Recording. If you fail to do this, you will not be able to record a meeting once it's started. Now, if you do start a meeting and realize that you forgot this step, just end the meeting right away before you get very far and just start a new one, making sure to check the box. Then put a check in this box that says no time limit. This way, there's no pressure that your meeting will suddenly end on you before you are finished in the event something comes up that maybe causes the meeting to go a little longer than you had anticipated. Assuming you only want members of your own team, just click this and then select the particular names that you want. Otherwise, everyone in the class will be getting an invitation to your meeting. Then click Update. At this point, the meeting is all set up and everyone you invited will receive an email asking them to join the meeting. They can also join by simply entering the course on Canvas, clicking on Conferences, and then clicking the Join button to the meeting that you already set up. These meetings can be set up either right before you want to begin the meeting, or you can set it up several days in advance, and it'll just be waiting here. When you are ready to start your meeting, just click Start up here next to the name of your meeting. Click Microphone because you plan to speak in the meeting, not just listen in. You'll be asked to enable your microphone, so just click Allow. Canvas then wants you to make sure your microphone is working, so just say a few words and see if you can hear yourself. Now it's time to enable your webcam so others will be able to see you. Just click down here on the video icon. Click Allow when Canvas requests to access your camera. Click Start Sharing. At this point, anyone else who has already joined the meeting can now see you. Once everyone is in, 
you're ready to begin. Be sure to start the recording of your meeting by clicking the red record button up here. You'll see it's working as the timer will start on it, which will also help you know how long you've been meeting. Now that we've started our conference, the second step is learning how to conduct a conference, which includes utilizing the available tools. One tool everyone can use is called public chat. This is a place where everyone can simply type messages that everyone else in the meeting can see. Some teams use this to share their phone numbers, web addresses, or even to alert the others in the team that maybe they're having issues with their audio or some other technical issue so the team can then help them brainstorm how to fix it. Some tools, however, can only be used when you take over the presenter role. The person who set up the meeting is called the meeting's moderator and that person begins as the default presenter. Now, if you're not the presenter, you will not see some of the tools on your screen. That's really not a big deal, however, as the moderator can simply click on your name over on the far left and make you the presenter. Now you've got access to all the presentation tools. The moderator can switch presenters as often as she wants so that whoever needs to present something has full access to all the tools. One tool she can use is called Upload Presentation. She simply clicks this blue circle with a plus sign in it and selects Upload Presentation. From there, she'll simply click Browse Files and find her document wherever she saved it on her computer and click Open. Then just click Upload. Now the speed of opening it will depend on the size of the document. It'll then open in the center of your meeting screen, but will probably be too small for people to read. You can easily just enlarge your space by first clicking on Public Chat to just temporarily hide that function since you're really not using it now. But once it's hidden, just come down here and click the icon that says Fit to Width. This enlarges the document greatly. The presenter's mouse is set to a default of a pen to write on the document, but if you want to grab it and pan up or down on the document, just click on Tools, which is a pencil icon, then select the little hand, which is called Pan. Once opened and enlarged, you can always change your mouse back to a pencil and annotate the document. When you get to the bottom of the page, just click Next Slide at the bottom, which will advance you to the next page in your document. It'll revert back to the same original size, so just follow the same steps to fit to width. If you're finished looking at the document and are just having a general discussion, simply click the blue hide presentation button at the top of your presentation so it temporarily disappears and now enables you to see each other better for general discussion. When you're ready to pull the document up again, any of you at any time can just click the blue button at the bottom that says restore presentation. Now it won't automatically do that on each member's screen, so each of you can simply follow the same easy step to toggle back and forth to either view or hide the document and just focus on the webcams. Probably the most useful presentation tool within a Canvas conference is called Screen Share. Whoever is a presenter at the time can simply click the Screen Share icon from the row of icons at the bottom of the screen that says Share Your Screen. Once you click that, you've got three options for how you share your screen that are ultimately pretty similar. One option is your entire screen, which will show everyone your entire screen and whatever you then choose to open, whether it be a document or website or any other program. Another is called application window, which works well if you previously have opened an application on your computer and this allows you to just toggle directly to it. The third is called Chrome tab, which just directly opens a browser window so you can begin surfing the internet. I always just choose your entire screen as it gives me the most flexibility while it's selected up here. Indicated by being blue, it shows me what my screen looks like. Assuming that's what I want, I just click on the small image of my screen, which puts a gray highlight box around it, and then just click start. It shows that it's opening, and once it's open, it's essentially taking a picture of a picture of a picture, giving it this appearance of these cascading windows. From here though, just open your document or go to whatever web page you want, and that will now be shared for everyone to view. This is a fantastic tool for team collaboration. By using screen share within video conferences, anything the presenter is viewing can be viewed and discussed by the entire team at the same time. Or even better, the presenter can open the team's shared Google Drive folder and open documents that the team can use for recording brainstorming notes with Google Docs, create budgets with Google Sheets, or even create presentations with Google Slides. No more having to just email documents back and forth to the entire group. 
asking them to individually review them and then send back comments. This way, all eyes are on the same document at the same time and any edits are made in real time, becoming truly collaborative. One thing to keep in mind is that the person doing the screen share only sees his screen and what he is sharing, but everyone else in the meeting gets to see both. Their view looks like this. They see whatever the presenter is sharing, but they also see everyone's webcams. Once the presenter stops sharing his screen by clicking the blue button at the bottom that says stop sharing, he too will again see all the webcams. Now let's assume someone else wants to be presenter so that she can either upload a document or do a screen share. The meeting moderator, the one who set up the meeting, just needs to click on the person's name over on the left, which gives a drop down menu. One of them says, take presenter. Just click it. Then that newly appointed presenter can walk through the identical steps explained earlier. But when that member is finished presenting, the moderator is the only one who can then either give the presenter role to someone else or take back the presenter role for himself by clicking on his own name and selecting Take Presenter. However, there is one way for the moderator to give everyone in the meeting equal ability to make themselves presenters rather than relying on the moderator to do so. To enable that freedom, the moderator simply needs to click on everyone's names on the far left one at a time and from the drop down menu by each name, just select Promote to Moderator. This way, each member now can see the blue plus sign circle in the lower left of their screens. Now each member can just take control of the screen whenever they want. Earlier, we looked at how a team can use screen share to display shared documents like Google Docs and to take notes and edit documents. But what if you're having a meeting and your group isn't using a system like that, but you would still like a way to keep notes or meeting minutes and yet still be able to save them for later access if desired. One tool that will do just that is called Shared Notes. When they're finished with their meeting and they want to save any notes made here, just click this icon in the toolbar ribbon to export or hence save the notes as a file. We've walked through starting a conference and then how to conduct a conference. The last step though is how to end a conference. To log out, each member can simply click the three little dots in the upper right corner of the screen and select Bye -bye. Log Out. Bye. Bye. Click Yes. Then you can just click the three dots in the upper right hand screen and select End Meeting and then confirm it. Immediately at the meeting's close, you can find your meeting under Conferences. If it isn't already shown under Concluded Conferences for whatever reason, you can just click End to confirm that you did indeed want it ended and that will automatically move it down from new conferences to concluded conferences. There's nothing else a team member needs to do in order to save the video or anywhere they need to go in order to create a link for it. Videos of all recorded meetings are automatically saved here for the duration of the course for both instructors and learners alike to access them. But notice that it's not yet a clickable link. In other words, you can't view it as a video yet because it takes time to process it first. Depending on the length of the meeting, it could take anywhere from several minutes to several hours before it becomes a clickable link. Now, if it's not there within 24 hours at the latest, there's only one reason. Someone forgot to either click the red record button or when they were setting up the meeting, someone forgot to put a check in that tiny box enabling the record option to even be in the meeting in the first place. When the meeting's recorded video is available, it'll look like this. Just click on it and select video. This will open the video of your meeting. Now you can click to play, or if you want to download a copy of the meeting's video, just right click anywhere on the screen and click save video as, and then give it a name and just save it wherever you choose. Connecting geographically dispersed team members has really never been easier, allowing members to join meetings from their own homes, office, coffee shops, or even the commuter train. Online collaboration has never really been easier than this. So let's log on and let's get started.